October 1991, the storm of the century. Andrea Gale, do you read me? Do you read me? Come in. Come in, for God's sake, come in, Billy. These storms have collided. A scene from the 2000 movie The Perfect Storm. Swordfish captain Linda Greenlaw, betrayed by actress Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, frantically warning fellow captain Billy Tyne, played by George Clooney, that a massive nor'easter was gaining hurricane strength and headed right for Tyne's boat, the Andrea Gale, out of Gloucester, Mass. Andrea Gale, come in! The whole frantic, dramatic scene um, with Linda Greenlaw and Billy Tyne, um, that was Hollywood. The real Linda Greenlaw says her last conversation with Captain Billy Tyne wasn't about the fateful storm. He was not in any danger at that point. It was just a typical conversation. There was no, you know, warning or screaming or, or anything of that nature. Billy Tyne and his crew of the Andrea Gale were never seen again, lost at sea, like so many of Linda's colleagues who are passionate about this dangerous profession. By no means the worst weather I had ever seen. In my case, I had a little warning because of these guys west of me really struggling. And what you do is low, these low pressure systems always feed on the hot water. So I had time to steam into the cold water up near Labrador and get where I thought the, um, the storm would be less severe. And, you know, I made a good decision and we had time. The other guys didn't have time. You know, everyone in the fleet was calling the Andrea Gale and never getting an answer. Um, one of the problems is with, there was never a May Day call. Linda and her crew discovered the only item left from the Andrea Gale. It was a 55-gallon drum that had AG painted on it. It was one of the Andrea Gale's fuel drums. When you meet Linda Greenlaw, you are struck by her warm smile and her height. When people meet me for the first time, if they, they're meeting this woman who survived the perfect storm, I always get Wow, we thought you'd be a lot bigger. People are always like really disenchanted. But make no mistake, Linda is strong, hardworking, and she knows how to catch fish. Seen here on the Discovery Channel show, Swords, Life on the Line, a show that featured Linda and other sword boat crews working at sea. You quickly learn why Perfect Storm author Sebastian Younger called her one of the best captains, period, on the East Coast. Mother Nature is a huge factor in the profit of a trip. Um, if you get out to the fishing grounds, there's steam in five days to get to where you can set your first hook. Right, you leave, leave Gloucester or um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, you steam in five days. These are 10 knot boats, not speed boats. By the time the 1991 Halloween storm ravaged the New England coast, Linda had been fishing for 15 years. The storm didn't change her life. The book did. My phone started ringing. Um, publishers in New York inviting me to write a book. Greenlaw grew up off the coast of Maine. At a young age, the sea called to her. Fishing became her passion and her life. We caught up with Linda on a ride out to the Isles of Shoals on a boat her husband built in Maine and is now docked in Newcastle. I spent my early childhood trying to catch anything that swam or crawled around the shores surrounding my home. I started fishing commercially when I was in college. I needed money for school, and uh, I did what I thought was a very natural thing. I threw a garbage bag full of dungarees and t-shirts onto the deck of a boat and headed offshore for the first of many 30-day, uh, very salty, blue water adventures in pursuit of swordfish. I fell in love with the way of life. I, I like the way I feel when I'm at sea. I'm passionate about catching fish. Her adventures at sea were detailed in her first book, The Hungry Ocean. She has also written cookbooks with her mother, Martha Greenlaw. I can honestly say the most difficult year of my life was writing my first book. Linda spoke recently at a signing at Gibson's Bookstore in Concord. Her ninth book is a novel called Shiver Hitch. It is her third book in the Jane Bunker mystery series. Jane Bunker is not Linda Greenlaw, uh, contrary to what a lot of people think. Um, she's uh, pretty sassy, real smart, good sense of humor. Um, and she's a detective who is working on some mysteries. I still write about what I know. So I, I've set the books in uh, down east coastal Maine, fishing communities. 
I know Mainers, I know fishing communities. Uh, anytime I can get Jane Bunker aboard a boat, we're golden. Those are the passages that the, the editors never touch. Weather, mechanical problems, 1,000 miles offshore, Greenlaw and her crew spent 18 back-breaking hours in search of a great catch, 30 days away from home. Still, her passion for her industry and swordfish comes through. Swordfish are like the most amazing fit. I've done all different types of fishing, but swordfish are absolutely, they're like a unicorn. They are so amazing. I mean, look, this thing has a big sword sticking out of its head. They're just they're just absolutely fantastic fish. Now married, Linda doesn't venture out on those 30-day trips anymore, instead focusing on her writing. And while she mourns the loss of Billy Tyne and his crew, like so many other colleagues lost at sea, she is grateful for the book and movie that changed her life and put her love fishing into the spotlight. I'm so thrilled that Something I've done for so long, or did do for so long, got that kind of attention with that book and that movie, and it brought so much attention to my life. Um, fishing. Where are you? Tail of the banks, kicking up something wicked here. Where are you? Go I think in the wake of the book and the movie, there's been so much uh, interest just from the general public in commercial fishing that it's been really wonderful. <laughs>